Hi guys, uh, in today's video we're going to be discussing variables in Java. Now a variable is needed to store a piece of information so that the computer knows what the information is. So <clears throat> briefly you can use different types of variables. So you can have an int, that means integer, which means a whole number, and you've got to give it a name. You type the type, int, and then you give the name. So we'll call this bank balance, and we'll say equals zero. So now we have a number called bank balance that contains nothing. Much like my bank balance currently. So you can have another type of variable called a string, and this is a string because it's like a string of characters together. So you could call this uh, account holder name, put in equals, and do two speech marks like that, and one of them semicolons to finish it off. And we could put in there Jim Smith. And this is how you would do it in Java. So the name is held as uh, a string of characters and the bank balance is held as an uh, integer, so that's a number type and that is like a text type. Um, there are other types that you probably will never need, well you will need them later if you become a, a really professional in, in Java, but for learning there's a lot that you don't have to care about. Um, now I'll just quickly give you some that you might need. There's a one called Boolean, and we could call this um, <coughs> in debt, right? We could say equals tr equals false. Now the, the boolean is true or false. It's the simplest type of, of variable in Java. And it's either on or off. So in debt, if it's true, then the account is in debt. I've put false because the currently it's not in debt, it's on zero. But if it was on minus five, you could say in debt equals true. Because he would then be in debt. Now, if you know a lot about Java variables or even a small amount, you might suggest that the bank account is actually the bank balance variable is wrong because there is another one called float. Let's say bank balance. And we'll just stick an F there at the moment to define the difference, but we would have to put 0.0F to do that. And floating point means it's not a whole number. Int means integer, which means one, two, three, four, five. Whereas float means floating point, which means you can have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, and that might be better for representing a bank account. You know, But even then, at some point, it can be broken down into uh, whole numbers. But if you do want to represent something um, a bit more precisely, then you can use a float. But I wouldn't use a float until you really feel that your integer will not do it because you might be using it wrongly. And there really is no reason to use them until you feel, oh, I, I definitely need a float here. I'm doing mathematics that might need some, uh, <coughs> some decimal places, you know. Like if I divide 15 by 3, then I can do that with an integer because the answer is a whole number. But if I divide 15 by 9, then the answer will require a float to truly um, preserve the uh, accuracy, the, the, the value, right? Um, so we have the integer, which is whole numbers. We have the string, which is text. We have the Boolean, which is on or off. And we have the float, which is same as the int, but more, more precise. You can have 1.6 and 1.7 as opposed to just 1 and 2. Now, briefly, I will, in, I will mention the other ones, but if I, we need them later in the course, then obviously I will explain them more, but you have a byte, uh, a short, a long, a double, a char, and there is another thing called arrays, which we will get back to later on. It's a bit more advanced, but once you get the basics here, you'll be able to understand arrays just fine. Now, we don't really need byte short, long, double or char when we're just talking uh, in basic Java terms for now. So I won't go into any detail on them. But what I'm going to do now is go into some detail on how you might manipulate these variables. 
and I've just been doing this example in Edit Plus, so what I'm going to do is pause it and uh, load up NetBeans, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so here I am in NetBeans. Uh, we can start a new project. You can do this in Eclipse as well, of course. Um, and we have a lot of types to choose from. For now, I'm just going to choose an ordinary um, Java application. <coughs> and I'm going to call this uh, lecture. It's not really a lecture, but you know what I mean. Variables 1, in case we need more. I'll call it A, because 1 is a bit confusing. You click finish there, and this will go away and set up a, a structure of a project for you all nicely, so you'll be ready to run it. Of course, it won't do anything, but uh, you'll be able to ready to run it, and here it is. And as you can see, I've got the author already uh, pre-populated, which is a setting in up here in tool settings somewhere. You can change it so your, your author name appears there, and it just feels quite nice. So if I run this by hitting this or pressing F6, then actually my output window is on the other screen. Here it is. I should dot this for now. I find it useful to use multiple screens uh, so I, I can have my output on one screen and my code on another. It's, it's quite nice. For now I'm going to try to redock it. So we'll run this again. And what happens is run, build successful, nothing happens because this is where your application code goes. So we'll paste in, control C of course, what we took from uh, the text editor. And if you highlight it, if it goes weird like that, you can highlight it and then just press tab twice to line it up nicely. And another trick, if it goes too far, you can press shift and tab to go back. Now that took me about 12 years to learn, so you should remember that trick. <laughs> Right, so we're going to get rid of the bank balance float for now because I think that's just confusing. But we have three variables, right? Bank balance, account holder name, and in debt. Now, how can we use these variables? Well, the first and classic thing we always do is system.out.println. And I know it's a mouthful to type. Later on, I'm going to show you a much cooler and smarter way of typing it that saves a lot of time. But for now, we're going to do it the normal way so that you get used to it. Um, and then you appreciate the time saver more, and you also don't forget the functionality of what's actually going on. Um, so, for example, we could say the name of the account. No, we could just, first of all, we could just say, hello, banking world. we run that and it will print out hello banking world so the system has actually set up the variables but it doesn't know anything about them now we can print them we can say let's do another line right copy paste that and then say the name of the account holder is a little semicolon doesn't whoops my space bar's a bit broken. It doesn't really matter what you type in there. But then you copy and paste account holder name and you put it here with a plus, like that. And what that does is actually underneath it's adding this string here. Remember, a string is a series of characters, so that is the same as Jim Smith there. It's a string. It's just that we haven't declared it, we haven't given it a name, we just made it right there. It's taking this string and then it's adding this number to it. So you're adding a string and a number. Actually, sorry, it's adding this string to it. Account holder there is a string. So it's adding Jim Smith to that. And that just gives you one big string. So that works fine, right? That's, that's a simple string. So we play. And it will now say the name of the account holder is Jim Smith. Which is quite nice, right? Now we could have declared it in a new variable if we wanted. Let's say we go string um, text we want to print equals nothing for now, right? So now we have a value of text we want to print. Uh, no, the, the variable, but no.